Hello there, YouTube family. Welcome back for another episode of Rerun TV. Today we're diving deep into the fascinating world behind the scenes of one of the most iconic sitcoms in television history, Sanford and Son. Get ready as we uncover the untold truth behind the laughter, drama, and unforgettable moments that made this show a classic. Sanford and Son, a timeless sitcom that graced our screens from 1972 to 1977, was more than just a source of laughter, it was a cultural phenomenon. Produced by Bud Yorkin and Norman Lear, the sitcom was based on the British TV show Steptoe and Son. It followed the hilarious misadventures of Fred Sanford, a junk dealer played by the legendary Red Fox, and his son Lamont, portrayed by the talented Demond Wilson. But behind the scenes, there was a story that few knew about, a story of creativity, controversy, and camaraderie. Sanford and Son was NBC's answer to the success of CBS's All in the Family, which tackled social issues through humor. But Sanford and Son had its own unique flavor, blending comedy with poignant insights into family dynamics and societal norms. It was the second predominantly black show since the 1950s Amos and Andy show. Sanford and Son was renowned for its sharp racial humor, running gags, and catchphrases, which is why the show was an instant hit. Big dummy. One of the show's most notable features was its theme song, The Street Beater, composed by the legendary Quincy Jones. This funky tune set the tone for each episode and became synonymous with the Sanford and Son experience. Now let's delve deeper into the main cast members of Sanford and Son the individuals who brought the beloved characters to life and contributed to the show's enduring legacy. Red Fox, whose real name was John Elroy Sanford, was a comedic genius known for his irreverent stand-up comedy. Despite his talent, Fox initially faced challenges in landing the role of Fred Sanford due to the controversial nature of his humor. Interestingly, Clee Von Little, known for his role in Blazing Saddles, was initially offered the role of Fred Sanford, but declined due to prior commitments. Little recommended Red Fox for the role, having worked with him previously in the film Cotton Comes to Harlem. Fox's portrayal of Fred Sanford, a cantankerous yet lovable junk dealer, became iconic. Despite being 49 years old in real life, Fox convincingly portrayed the 65-year-old character, employing various techniques such as wearing weighted shoes to perfect the character's shuffle-waddle walk. Fred Sanford was known for his bigotry and racial prejudices, which added depth and complexity to the character. Fred would often fake heart attacks with his trademark line, Oh, this is the big one, you hear that, Elizabeth? This also added a unique layer of humor to the show. Oh, this is the biggest one I ever had! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Fun fact, Fox used his influence on Sanford and Son to help secure roles for his friends on the show, which included LaWanda Page, Slappy White, Gregory Sierra, Don Bexley, and Pat Morita, demonstrating a commitment to giving opportunities to talented individuals in an industry that wasn't always inclusive. LaWanda Page was almost fired from her role because she was always too nervous while filming, but Red Fox fought for her stay. Demond Wilson, on the other hand, played the role of Lamont Sanford, Fred's sensible and hardworking son. Wilson brought sincerity and authenticity to his portrayal, serving as the perfect foil to Fox's antics. The dynamic between Fred and Lamont formed the heart of the show, providing endless opportunities for humor, conflict, and heartfelt moments of familial bond, contributing significantly to the show's success, earning them widespread acclaim and solidifying their places in television history. Despite its success, Sanford and Son faced its share of behind-the-scenes drama. Red Fox found himself embroiled in a dispute with the producers of Sanford and Son. This dispute arose due to Fox not showing up to start taping the new season. Tensions reached a boiling point when Fox walked off the set, demanding a higher salary and 25% ownership stake in the series. This sudden departure left the production in disarray, and the show's creators were forced to temporarily write out Fox's character. In response, the producers filed a lawsuit against Fox, seeking $10 million in damages for breach of contract. After a period of negotiations, Red Fox eventually returned to Sanford & Son under a new agreement. He secured a salary of $25,000 per episode, a significant increase from the $19,000 he earned previously. 
Additionally, Fox negotiated for 25% of the producer's net profit from the show, further solidifying his financial stake in its success. Fox's salary dispute and subsequent walkout had a profound impact on the dynamics between the cast members, particularly his relationship with DeMond Wilson. Wilson reportedly felt betrayed by Fox's actions, as he was not informed of the walkout by Fox beforehand. In fact, he learned about it from a newscaster in the hallway. The rift caused by the dispute lingered throughout the remainder of the show's run, creating tension on set. Despite the challenges and controversies surrounding Red Fox's salary dispute, Sanford and Son continued to thrive, but then something unexpected happened. Rumors of drug use while on set among the cast, including Fox and Wilson, started circulating. Allegedly, LaWanda Page, who portrayed Aunt Esther, was the supplier. While these allegations were never confirmed, they did add a layer of curiosity to the show's history. As the curtains closed after season six and a gradual decline in ratings, fans mourned the end of an era. Red Fox's departure spelled the demise of the beloved sitcom, leaving a void that spinoffs struggled to fill. Sanford and Son Producers was forced to end the show when ABC offered Red Fox a hefty sum to host his variety show, The Red Fox Comedy Hour. Despite high expectations, the show faltered and was short-lived, ending after only three months. The first attempt at continuing the Sanford legacy came with Grady, focusing on Fred's widowed friend Grady Wilson, portrayed by Whitman Mayo. While the show had a brief run, it failed to capture the same magic as its predecessor. Sanford Arms followed, attempting to center around Fred's old army buddy, Phil Wheeler, played by Theodore Wilson, and his hotel business, which was Fred and Lamont's old rooming house. Despite featuring familiar faces from the original series, including Lawanda Page as Aunt Esther, the spinoff only managed to produce 10 episodes before low ratings led to its cancellation. Finally, Sanford, in which Red Fox attempted to continue the Sanford legacy, but DeMond Wilson refused to reprise his role. Therefore, without the dynamic duo at its core, the show struggled to resonate with audiences and concluded after just two seasons. The spin-offs may have come and gone, but none could replicate the success and charm of Sanford and Son. The legacy of the original series continues to live on in the hearts of fans, reminding us of the timeless humor and unforgettable characters that made it a television classic. Fun fact, the 1951 Ford F1 pickup truck has exchanged hands many times since the show, but is now on permanent display at the Blue Line Classic showroom in Ohio, where it continues to draw crowds of fans. Over the years, several cast members from Sanford and Son have visited the truck and autographed it. Despite facing challenges behind the scenes, Sanford and Son soared to incredible heights of success during its six-season run. The show defied expectations and became a ratings juggernaut, consistently finishing in the Nielsen Top 10 in five of its six seasons, despite airing in the competitive Friday night death slot. Its ability to resonate with audiences of all backgrounds spoke to the universal appeal of its humor and characters. Sanford and Son's success wasn't just limited to ratings, the show garnered critical acclaim and received numerous accolades, including seven Emmy nominations. Among these nominations were two for Outstanding Comedy Series and two for Fox as Outstanding Lead Actor, a testament to the show's impact on the television landscape. Before we conclude, it's essential to take a moment to remember the talented individuals who have passed on since Sanford and Son. We pay tribute to LaWanda Page, whose portrayal of Aunt Esther added depth and humor to the show. Slappy White's comedic timing as Melvin Slappy White brought joy to audiences, while Gregory Sierra's portrayal of Julio Fuentes added richness to the cast. Don Bexley's role as Bubba Bexley brought warmth and humor to the screen, and Pat Morita's guest appearances as Achu left a lasting impression on fans. Whitman Mayo's portrayal of Grady Wilson in the spin-off show Grady highlighted his comedic talent, and Nathaniel Taylor's portrayal of Rollo Lawson added charm and charisma to the series. Raymond Allen's recurring role as Woodrow Woody Anderson provided many memorable moments, and last but not least, we honor the incomparable Red Fox. His iconic portrayal of Fred G. Sanford will forever be etched in television history. 
As we remember these remarkable individuals, let us celebrate their contributions to Sanford and Son and the world of entertainment. Their legacy lives on through the timeless laughter and joy they brought to audiences around the globe. Rest in peace, dear friends. You will always be remembered. And there you have it, the untold truth behind the scenes of Sanford and Son. From its groundbreaking humor to its behind the scenes drama, this show continues to captivate audiences worldwide. If this journey through TV history has you reminiscing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more stories like this. Let us know in the comments which sitcoms, films, or music you'd like to hear about. Share your favorite Sanford and Son memories. Until next time, keep those antennas tuned for more rerun TV.